Hey, Bream, you got any lineups? Uh, yeah, plan for order. Why did I lie? I don't actually have the lineups. Wait, there's still time. I can fix this. Come on, YouTube, help me out. What's going on, guys? Welcome video. back to another Rally tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you the lineups on this map. Remember to like, subscribe, and take your seizure medications because this video is going to get crazy. Let's roll that intro. Didn't you already play the intro? Why do I have to deal with this? Recently, I wanted to get better at lineups, but I didn't want to use tutorials or find them the traditional way. So instead, I made a lineup calculator that calculates them for me. You don't have to watch those videos first for this to make sense, but I mean, if you want to, uh, I'm not gonna stop you. As a quick summary, you could place the spike and your agent wherever you want, select from any of these abilities, and then the calculator would shoot every possible shot until one of them landed. Once they did, you can recreate that in game, and there you go, free lineups. Before adding other maps and abilities, for this video I wanted to concentrate on making the program faster. This is hard because the program doesn't know anything about the map before shooting, so we can't immediately remove things like shooting backwards. Instead, inspired by world borders that kill mollies when they've gone too far, I made it so that when mollies bounce far away from the spike, they would calculate their maximum trajectory considering perfect bounces, and if their range was less than the distance they had to move, they would just kill themselves. So to continue optimizing, I thought, why don't I listen to you guys? What could possibly go wrong when reading the comments? The most common suggestion was to reverse the simulation. This way, you could find all of the positions and shots necessary to hit the spike at the same time. This is based on the fact that all parabolas have a symmetry line, and that there's nothing in physics that says we can't have negative time. Again, what could possibly go wrong reversing time itself? It turns out a lot can go wrong, but I don't blame you for suggesting this, it took me a while to figure out why. Reversing a simulation will give you all of the positions you can shoot from, it just doesn't mean they're usable positions. It's easy to realize that sometimes it would tell you to shoot from outside the map, but more importantly, sometimes it would be telling you to shoot from the sky or inside the ground. An easy way to visualize it is with this graphic. All of these three scenarios have the same initial direction and bounces, but only one has a usable lineup. This is because even though all of them have intersections with the ground, in this one the molly would be going much faster, in this one much slower, because the positions of the parabolas mean that the initial velocities have to be different so that it lands in the right place. Basically, since all mollies have a specific initial velocity, you need to start in a specific part of a parabola for it to land properly. And the next suggestion I got was to get a pay tree on? You want me to put on a pay tree? I mean, if it'll help the calculator. Do it for the video, man. Come on, you can do it. Now that I have a paying tree on me, I thought I'd let you know that, since quite a few suggested it, I made a Patreon. If I'm being honest, I can't offer that many features or that many cool things, so if you want to support just this random dude on the internet for some reason, then I really do appreciate it and I promise I'll be spending it responsibly, probably on getting a better PC. We've talked about what I've done and what I can do. Now let's talk about the upgrades that I did actually add. As a lot of you recommended, I changed the physics engine from using object calculations to ray casting. If you're one of the people that left a comment, you might have seen that I responded saying it wasn't possible, and that's because I actually thought it wasn't. That was until this really cool guy called Emmett messaged me letting me know that it was possible and he would actually be able to help me do it. Or rather, 
he could do all of it and carry the team, while I gave very uh, intellectual feedback about the updates he sent me. And after four weeks of trying and countless attempts, the calculator finally got this run. Yeah, it doesn't look as cool while it's calculating, but it is a lot faster. As in 10 times faster per simulation and about 100 times faster per shot. Since it'll calculate every lineup possible from a starting location and an ending location. This already works really well, but I couldn't let other people do all the work for me. So instead, I figured out my own optimization. Because vectors are so efficient, there's no real point in doing anything other than eliminating vectors before shooting them. This is something that I originally thought was impossible since, as I've stated many times, the computer doesn't know anything about the map and so it never knows when a shot backwards or in any direction will bounce towards the right direction. For the optimization I implemented in the first video, I was already able to figure out a formula to calculate maximum range, but that doesn't take into account angle so, I could modify that, and as a matter of fact, that's actually the experimental feature that I mentioned in my first video. I did add a couple more things to make the code run better, but none of them are really worth mentioning, so I'll just call those experimental features. But because it's sometimes calculating a lot of different angles in a single frame, it ended up having really bad lag spikes that I just couldn't use. That's why, for the first time, I'll be working smarter and not harder, and I figured out what I call circle optimization. It's a bit complicated, but trust me, it'll make sense. Let's take this situation where the agent is the green circle and the spike is the blue circle. Because the computer doesn't know anything about the map, the optimization can depend on that information. We already have a formula that tells us maximum range of a molly, but that's not very useful because that only says if a lineup is possible or not. But because we know the bounce speed reduction, we can also figure out the range of a molly after it's bounced. This doesn't seem very useful, but trust me, it'll make sense. We can also make a circle with the radius of the distance between the spike and the agent, and basically anything inside the circle is closer to the spike than our original position and anything outside the circle is farther away than the original position. This means that any molly shot to one side of the tangent line will no matter what bounce farther away from the spike than the original position, while everything to the other side has a chance of bouncing closer to the spike than the original position. This means that if the range after bouncing isn't enough to reach the spike from the original position, it will never be enough to reach the spike from farther away. This means we can eliminate everything to that side of the tangent line. Now we can repeat this process using a smaller circle and the tangent lines to that. Again, if the range after bouncing is less than the distance to the spike, we can eliminate all the shots past that tangent line. We can repeat this until it's no longer true, and then we have the list of angles that we have to check, and everything else we know can't reach. Finally, let's talk about the other changes you might have noticed when I was showing off the new physics engine. Firstly, Emmett added a first person version so that it would be easier to move your agent around and so that it would also be a lot easier to recreate the shot in game later. Also, you might have noticed that there is some UI and that's because we're starting to add it. And that's not me or Emmett because another wild dev appeared. So this guy at the Wander is basically helping out with the UI and he's also trying to get all of the maps with their textures so that it is one, more accurate, and two, easier to recreate shots. Finally, we changed out the drive for our GitHub because the download times were being painful 
But don't blame it on me. I did everything I could to make download to items fast. It's just Google Drive is not the right way of doing it. So, with this new team assembled, we're planning on making the UI, adding other agents and abilities, and maybe some other interesting things for the future. Unfortunately, there isn't anything flashy I can show for the end of this video, so all I'll say is thanks for watching.